Strange, but true stories. Tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. William Faulkner wrote, The past is never dead. It's not even past. That quote resonated in my head as I was working with the stories for this episode of SBT on time glitches. Now, I know, I know Faulkner was not talking about glitches in the Matrix when he wrote that. But for the subjects today who submitted stories to us for a brief moment, the past was indeed not past. It was reoccurring. It was reoccurring. It was reoccurring. It was reoccurring. The first two stories today were submitted to us by women. These have been in the SBT file marked for later use for a while now. So, side note, if you submit a story to us and we don't get to it right away, it doesn't mean we aren't interested. I can even paraphrase Faulkner by saying emails in the for later use file are not dead. They're just waiting for their moment. So, keep sending us your strange experiences. Details at the end of the episode. For now, enjoy these two women's experiences repeated. Ah, laundry day. Not my favorite day, but it was more than pastime, and it was a must. I had been home a few days visiting my parents and my two younger brothers, who still live there. There's Jared, the middle brother, and my youngest brother is Jamie. And to understand what happened and why this is so weird... You have to visualize the way the house was set up. The front entryway, living room, dining room, and kitchen all formed one big loop. The laundry room is off the dining room. All the bedrooms and the bathroom are in a long hallway off where the living room and dining room meet. So all the rooms are on the same level. It was late afternoon on this particular day, and I was in the laundry room when I heard the front door open and then close. I distinctly heard someone set a bag of groceries down on the counter and then proceed to turn my parents' ancient oven on. Now, this thing had a characteristic loud click when you turned it on to preheat. Kind of like Pavlov's dog, whenever you heard this distinctive click of the oven, you would start thinking dinner is not too far off. I thought it was Jared who had just gotten home from work and was about to put some dinner in the oven. That was something he usually did, nothing out of the ordinary, so I kept loading the washer. Now, even though he tended to cook dinner a lot of nights, he always seemed to have trouble locating a sheet pan and the cramped, dark lower cabinet. I heard him rifling through the pans in the cabinet and finally placing a heavy metal sheet pan on the counter with a loud clunk. I went on with my laundry. I switched clothes from the washer to the dryer and took the clothes from the dryer with me into the dining room. As I was folding the fresh laundry on the dining room table, I heard Jared sigh under his breath in the hallway and say, "Ah, Somebody is always in the bathroom here. I thought he must have already gone down the hallway and was coming back toward the living room at that point. My back was to the living room, but I could hear his feet shuffle lightly on the carpet as he walked through the living room back into the kitchen. A minute later, I remembered one additional piece of clothing in the back bedroom that I wanted to include in the load of laundry I had just started. As I ran down the long hallway to the back bedroom, I noticed the light was off in the bathroom now. I thought to myself, Jamie must have been in the bathroom, but he's out now. I grabbed the piece of clothing and ran back to the laundry room to throw it into the already going washing machine. I walked into the kitchen to tell my brother Jared that Jamie was out of the bathroom now and it was available. When I got into the kitchen, though, I couldn't find Jared. I looked around the kitchen and noticed there were no groceries on the counter. I looked at the oven. It was stone cold, and it was not even switched on. I opened the door. There was nothing in the oven. So, now I'm a little freaked out. I walked to the front door. Jared would leave it unlocked when he got home, but the door was still locked. I was completely baffled and a little bit scared at this point, but I was sure there was a logical explanation. I just needed to calm down and it would start to make sense. I went to the living room to watch some TV and wait for my laundry to finish up. My youngest brother, Jamie, came out of his room to ask if Jared was home yet. I thought for a few seconds before I told him I really wasn't sure. I asked him if he had been in the kitchen about an hour ago, turned on the stove, banged some pans around looking for one to use. 
Or had he been in the bathroom recently? He said he had just woken up from a two-hour nap, so nope, not him. My confusion was growing. Just then, Jared walked through the front door of the house. He had a bag of groceries in his hands. I watched him as he set the bag down on the counter, pivoted to the oven, turning it on with the loud click, start rifling through the cabinet to retrieve a sheet pan, and then put it on the counter. It was exactly as I had heard about an hour earlier. Every sound was as familiar to me as the sound of my own breathing. At this point, I was pretty weirded out, but I didn't want to let on that I felt anything was amiss. I walked to the back bedroom to collect myself for a minute, and that's when I heard on the other side of the bedroom door in the hallway a deep sigh from Jared. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I knew what he was going to say next. (sighs) Somebody is always in the bathroom here. I heard his faint foot shuffle as he walked away toward the kitchen. I was having a tough time handling this. I heard every sound of Jared coming home twice, about an hour apart. What was going on here? Was I losing my mind? I sat on the bed in the room and tried to figure it out. Honestly, at first I thought maybe my brothers were playing some kind of trick on me. I thought about it for quite some time, but I couldn't figure out how they'd be able to pull that off. The noises that I had heard were exactly the same. A few days later, though, I asked both of them about it, and they were dumbfounded. Neither of them ever had a problem fessing up to playing a practical joke. Both of them assured me they had not played a trick on me. I have absolutely no explanation for this eerie experience. Could it have been some sort of time glitch that I only experienced auditorily? I don't know. Was it all just in my head? I don't think so. The sounds were so distinctive. I just wonder, though, what would I have seen if I would have gone into the kitchen the first time I heard Jared come home? I guess I'll never know. Valentine's Day 2018. I was out running errands. It was around midday and I had gone to get a few things for my toddler and niece. You know, last minute gifts for V-Day. So, oddly enough, there were two separate incidents that occurred within about two hours. I'm driving in the fast lane on the interstate and I looked in the rear view mirror and I saw a police car speeding up behind me. First thought, ah, oh, shoot, is he coming for me? Second thought, I will considerately get over into the middle lane and let this very nice police officer proceed on his journey. As he was going past me, I looked over and I caught a glimpse of the officer. There was nothing strange about him. It was a white guy in his uniform. He had a shaved head and he was looking forward, not at me, when he went by. Whew, no ticket for me. Now, this is where it got strange. He moved over into my lane, so he's now in front of me, and then he abruptly swerved right again, taking the next exit. All right, now I can get back in the fast lane and speed again. I I mean, um, move safely back into the far left lane and assume a safe speed slightly above the posted speed limit. I checked my side mirror and my blind spot, and I saw another police car. Well, the guy pulls up next to me, and I looked over again, but it's not another police car. It's the same police car. Same white guy with the shaved head driving. He's looking straight ahead and he moves on by me. I just witnessed the same exact scene as 30 seconds ago. What happens next? I bet you can guess. He moves over into my lane in front of me and then proceeds to get off at the next exit coming up to the right. So I didn't freak out. I'm just shaking my head and thinking, well, that was weird and continued on with my day. About an hour later, I'm at Walmart. I walk in, and all the Valentine's Day stuff is on an aisle directly in front of me as I walked into the store. So I'm scrounging through the barren shelves for some hidden gems my niece and daughter might appreciate, telling myself I should get started sooner next time around. 
When someone briskly walked past the end of the aisle I'm on, now the motion caught my eye and I looked up to see a person holding a cute little gift bag and I even commented to myself something along the lines of, "Ah, look, he's got a little gift for his sweetie. Even in that quick glance, I saw he was average height, slicked dark brown hair, blue button-up shirt, black slacks, shiny black dress shoes, holding that blue, smaller-sized gift bag by the handles, like he'd just purchased jewelry or some small gift. But then a moment later, it's happening all over again. I looked down for a few seconds at the stuff on the shelf when something made me look up towards the end of the aisle again, where this guy is literally walking past again same exact guy holding the same exact gift bag. Now, this time, yes, I start losing it. I frantically walked to the end of the aisle, looked towards the checkout lines and the door that I was near to see if I could catch him and possibly his evil twin from literally 15 seconds ago. But he was nowhere to be seen, or his twin. They had just vanished. I probably looked like a madwoman after witnessing this because I'm expressing myself out loud, saying things like, wait a minute, and no freaking way. My adrenaline was pumping, and I couldn't possibly ignore this one like I had the officers just an hour prior. So I decided to beeline it to the checkout and get out of there. I was in a confused stupor on my drive home. Two strange events like that in a two-hour span. It was too close together to be a coincidence. I've always been into strange and mysterious stuff, but it was only then that I started researching and learning of glitches in the Matrix and found that I was not alone in what I had experienced. I just wish I had been recording. I have had other supernatural, paranormal stuff happen before, but this was the only time I've had the privilege of witnessing such mystifying encounters in such a short time frame as two separate glitches in the Matrix and on Valentine's Day. And now for some quick glitches. Eh, actually, all glitches are quick. These are more like low on the word count, high on the impact glitches. A normal day for me goes... Wake up at 5.30, get ready, have coffee, quick breakfast, kiss my wife goodbye, and I'm at work by 6.30. After I leave, my wife goes back to sleep and wakes up uh, around 8, goes through her morning routine and heads to work. Occasionally, she won't fall back asleep, instead going downstairs to hit the treadmill or catch up on an episode of one of her favorite shows before getting ready for work. In mid-morning, I have a break and I always call her. We always seem to have the same conversation each time, too. How's your day? What are we going to do for dinner? I miss you. I love you. See you when I get home. Blah, 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 blah. However, a few weeks back now, I called her, and after going through the whole how's your day going conversation, she asked me, what did you forget this morning that you had to come back to the house for? Um, what? What are you talking about? She said, you came back home this morning, grabbed something, and left. Weren't you late for work? Wow, <laughs> do you start drinking that early? I thought I was being funny, but she wasn't laughing. In fact, I could tell she was getting upset. I heard you come back home around 7. You opened the front door, walked in, grabbed something off the table, turned around, went back out. You got back in your car and drove off. And you're saying it was me? Yes, it was you. I saw you get in your car and drive out again after you came in the house. It's a simple question. What did you forget that you had to come back for? Quit messing around. I told her honestly. I had not come back in the house. I got to work on time, and I hadn't left. We went round and round about it a few more minutes. She was 100% convinced I was there, but I kept telling her I was at work. She thinks I'm gaslighting her. I think, heck, I, I don't know what to think about it. Unless there's another me out there, I am stumped. A few years back, I was walking to work. I live in the city, and it's less than 10 blocks to the restaurant where I work. 
About halfway there, I saw a woman I work with walking in the opposite direction, leaving the restaurant. She had changed out of her uniform and was wearing her regular clothes. Now, we were friendly, but not like great friends. But when she saw me this time, she waved, said hi, how you doing? And we talked briefly about non-work stuff. It was a bit weird. We had never really talked outside of the restaurant and certainly not about personal life stuff. She said bye and walked away. Now, I'm not the most confident guy around women and felt the conversation had been a bit awkward. I turned around to see her walking away from me as I crossed the street. A few blocks later, I arrived at the restaurant, walked in the door, and the first voice I heard was the girl I had just passed on the street. She said, hello. Wait, what? Now, I really felt socially awkward as I stumbled and bumbled out, but you were... I just saw... How are you here? She was in her uniform, which was damp with water from cleaning the front window. She had almost all of it done at this point, but still had some left to do. She looked at me a little strange as I stammered and yammered my amazement of her presence. It's not possible that you could have made it back so fast. She looked at me strangely and told me she hadn't left since she'd been there and still had another few hours to go on her shift. She never mentioned seeing me on the street or having any conversation about anything other than work stuff in the restaurant. I know it was her because I saw her on the street and I know that she does not have a twin. It's the strangest thing that's ever happened to me, but nobody believes me. Another episode of SBT in the books. It's now time to tell us what you think about these experiences in the comments below. Or maybe you've had an experience very similar to one of these and you want to tell us about it. Send us an email with the story and all the details and we'll take a look at it. Who knows, maybe it could end up on a future episode of SBT. Send your story to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. Thanks for all the support and the patience. Thanks also for spending some of your time with us today. Until next time, I'm Steve White.